sort of beautiful. Do you know what happens if you make juice out of these? What? This is exactly like blood. From Taylor Swift being named Time Magazine's Person of the Year to a chat with the new darling of the art world and the new film from French director Lajli, whose previous movie was up for an Oscar. Thanks for joining us for a look at what's happening this week in culture. And let's start with the artist who's been awarded the prestigious Turner Prize. His work has been described as delirious and juggling with themes of Brexit, nationality, identity, bureaucracy, immigration and austerity. Humorous and bold, it's made up of net curtains, crowd control barriers, washing lines, bunting and ring binders, among other discarded junk. We can speak to Jesse Darling now from Berlin. Jesse, congratulations. As well as having the most fabulous name ever, uh, you have just won one of the biggest prizes in the art world. How are you feeling? Uh, well, I'm leaning into it. I accepted the nomination, so I better accept this too. Uh, the money's good. The Turner Prize jury commended you for your use of materials and commonplace objects like concrete, welded barriers, hazard tape, office files and net curtains to convey the reality, the messy reality of life. Um, do you see your work as a state of the nation address? And what are you saying about the world today? Well, Look, this is probably the most public show I'll ever do in in Britain, you know, my home country. And knowing that, I wanted to make a show that, um, you know, would sort of address that directly. I find the work um, fairly on the nose. I wanted to make something that could be understood by anyone who sees it without any special education or knowledge. Yeah, I would say you do have to see it. I would actually recommend that everybody go and see the Turner shows. There's four really good shows there, very deserving equally. Um, and yeah, I mean, what I'm trying to do, I think, is to, you know, I I want to I, I want to use objects that everyone can reference. Everyone knows what those things are, um, rather than sort of dressing it up in a lot of heavy concept. Jesse, let's talk a bit about your journey to get to this point. Your catalogue of jobs um, is remarkable. Can you tell us about some of the occupations you've done before you eventually ended up at London's prestigious art school, Central St. Martins? Yeah, I mean, I've done so many things that it's hard to know what to say about them or, you know, how to pick one out of the many. But um, I suppose that my trade was as a cook. I um, started doing that when I was about 14 and then decided early on that I didn't want to, you know, work my way up the kitchen hierarchy, which is very much like the army and has very little to do with cooking. I love cooking. I like making things. Um, or, you know, I, I did. And then I realised that, <laughs> which I'm realising at the moment, to do anything for money kind of uh, does complicate it somewhat. But anyway, yeah, I did a lot of big batch catering and... Um, yeah, you know, I've, done, I've really done a lot of things. You live in Berlin now. I read that your next project is inspired by French novelist and playwright Jean Genet's novel A Lady of the Flowers about underground queer Parisian life written in prison in the 1940s. Um, tell us a bit more. Well, I mean, first of all, I think it would have to be a very, um, a very wide riff on that. I wouldn't say it's a kind of direct adaptation. Um, Our Lady of the Flowers is um, a really beautiful text. Everybody should read it. Um, I think, you know, I really feel like the text speaks for itself. Um, but one thing is that it, uh, it sort of paints a world with a lot of rules and protocols like any social world has, you know, but they're just different to the ones that we know topside. Um, and I've been parts of I've been a part of different um, kinds of ways of living as well. Let's put it that way, and where we also had rules um, different to the rules we now have that I would call topside, and so that sort of spoke to me. And it's a very I mean Janae's a beautiful writer, and um, I like the idea of bringing 
that together with a uh, yeah with this sort of pantomime queerness which I think is sort of built into those forms in in the British um, context yeah just before we go, I just wondered, and when I asked the winner of the Booker Prize, Paul Lynch, how he was going to spend the £50,000 and prize money a couple of weeks ago, he said he was going to spend it on his mortgage. For the Turner Prize, it's £25,000. And what are you going to spend it on? Well, given that I don't own any property, I'll probably spend it on my rent. OK. All right, well, Jesse, um, good luck. Thank you for chatting to us. Stay with us um, until the end of the show. We're just about to talk about some of the other culture news taking place this week in the world of arts. And we're going now to French director Laj Lee. He has released the second film of a trilogy he's creating on the French suburbs. The first, Le Miserable, went all the way to the Oscars. Batiment 5, meaning Building 5, covers the hot-button topic of the French housing crisis. It follows a young woman's fight to save the building where she grew up from demolition. Here's Charlie James. He made a mark on moviegoers with Les Miserables. <laughs> Lajli won three French César awards, a jury prize at Cannes, and an Oscar nomination. The inspiration for his next film also came from the apartment complex where he grew up in, in the eastern Paris suburb of Montfermeil. This brings back so many memories. We had two apartments, actually, one here and one there, and this was open. But the apartment complex he grew up in no longer exists. On this vacant lot stood a 10-story tower, Building 5. Everything was destroyed three years ago in a vast urban renewal plan, a painful memory for the director. My parents owned it. After they finished paying it off, they were told they were being bought out for just 10, 15,000 euros. In his new film, Batiment 5, Lajli tackles the housing crisis. It follows a duel between a determined mayor and Abby, a neighborhood resident ready to fight. It's a film about suburban renewal, a source of conflict and sometimes violence. It's a situation that's not unique to this suburb. Director Laj Lee and actress Anta Diao observed similar situations throughout France, such as here in Aubervier, north of Paris. How do they justify tearing down the building? We're not wanted in Aubervier. Yeah, we're right next door to Paris, only five minutes. And Paris has gotten too small. I get the impression that it's exactly like in the film. In each city where we screen the movie, there's always someone who says, I feel like you've based this story on my life. With Batiment 5, the co-owners of these threatened buildings finally feel heard. It's about time someone talked about us. It will have to be resolved for politics. Elections instead of violence. That is the message of the film. Well, the other big news this week is that Taylor Swift has been named Time magazine's Person of the Year. The star follows the likes of Barack Obama, Greta Thunberg and Vladimir Zelensky. The award goes to an event or person deemed to have had the most influence on global events over the past year. I wonder, Jesse Darling, um, Taylor Swift is the first person of the year to be recognised for their achievement in the arts. What do you think about that? Are you a Taylor Swift fan? Oh, God, this is a question that uh, you didn't prepare me for. Um, <laughs> am I a Taylor Swift fan? Um, God, you know, that's kind of a personal question. <laughs> you know, if, it, like a lot changes depend on how you answer that question, I'll tell you what. So I'm going to have to, like all really serious political commentary, I'm going to have to no comment that question right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. What do you think about a person in the arts then being rec recognised as um, Time's Person of the Year? That's a good thing for the arts, isn't it? Um, look, the arts are just part of the world. You know, they... Um, they really are like science, politics, religion, anything else. They're just a, one of the sort of technologies of meaning making and uh, it all hangs together, yeah. So um, I, I was a bit surprised to hear that after Zelensky, you know, Taylor Swift has made the most impact on um, world events this year, but hey, <laughs> uh, why we're not? not? We're, not on the, we're not on the jury anyway. Well, last month, um, Taylor Swift was declared 
a billionaire. Her tour has broken box office records. It sees the singer perform a career spanning 45 songs set every single night. We're going to leave you a taster of that tour. Thank you to our guest today, Jessie Darling, the winner of this year's Turner Prize. And congratulations again. And thank you for joining us. See you next time. just like do a show with like all the albums in it and I was like yeah it's it's, it's gonna be called the Eras tour see you there it's